The Doppelganger. The Doppelganger. The Doppelganger. By J.C.W. Brooke. Help me. 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 Don't be silly. You'll like it when we get there. Don't want to go. Don't. But it'll be fun, I tell you. You can go swimming in the sea. And Ralph's joining us there. Why can't he come home? Oh, Beth, we are not going through that again. Now, do you remember the telegram he sent? He's fixed it all up for us. It's a lovely holiday. No, not lovely. Bad. Beth's frightened, can see things, things happening, bad things. Oh, darling, I'll look after you. No. Beth, look after you, Sarah. Have to. Oh, what do you mean? Can see, sometimes. Wolves are coming back. Oh, oh, you're wolves, is that all? Don't laugh. Wolves bad and getting close, very close, moving, howling. Can hear them. Oh, now, please, darling, don't upset yourself. <laughs> no. Promised Ralph wouldn't upset you. Try not to. Mustn't upset you. No. Well, shall we be going? The car's all packed. Yes. Won't see this house again. Might not see anything again. Might die again. Might die again. Cigarette? Jane? Cigarette? No, thanks. You've just put one out. Uh, ten minutes ago. Well, they're your lungs. Oh, Dad dropped into the office yesterday. Did I tell you? No, nope, you didn't. Mm, he called to wish us bon voyage, things like that. He said he might drop round and see you. Well, he didn't. I would have mentioned it. Yes, I'm sure you would. That wasn't the only reason he dropped in, however. He finally managed to sort out Mum's estate. Oh? A touch of interest in your eyes at last. Uh, it's not much. He gets most of it. Poor devil. Oh, Adam. Oh, shocked are you now? Little Jane shocked. Well, well, well. Oh, God, you can be so... Infuriating at times. Yes, I know. Look, for seven years he's been wandering about, wondering if she really did herself in, or... But the estate's been settled. She is now legally dead. God rest her soul. Oh, that's fine coming from you. You hated her. Oh, yes, I hated her, all right. Her and her piano. And her moods. They used to hang over the house like some black cloud. John and I used to spend half our time creeping about on tiptoe, scared of disturbing her. I can't imagine John creeping anywhere. Oh, he crept all right. Crept with the best of us. Although you might find it hard to credit. Even Dad crawled around after her like a little dog, hoping for a good mood now and again. Why, well, I ever married her, I... But come to think of it, people often make unfortunate marriages, don't they? Too right, they do. Any minute now, you'll be saying how you wished you'd married John. Oh, for God's sake, just shut up, will you? Well, off we go. Yes. It'll be okay when we get there, Beth. You like it? Beth's getting headache. Bad headache. Oh, don't be silly. I am not stopping now. We've finally got underway. Oh, look at all this traffic. I suppose they're still building that new roundabout. Let's make a detour. Go past the station, shall we? No. We'll be stuck for hours if we don't. Don't want to go past station. Not now. Well, it's too late, I'm afraid. And look, there's no traffic at all. Make Beth feel wrong inside. Wolves at station. Wolves. Does John know what we're doing? Yes, I mentioned it in my last letter. 
When we get to the hotel, there'll probably be a cable from Canada waiting. Rome and marriages aren't destroyed in a day. Stop. Good luck on your second honeymoon. Stop. Send her over to me if it doesn't work. Stop. Yours, John. Very witty. He knows where we're going. Oh, yeah. It's such a plush place, I couldn't avoid name-dropping. You wouldn't. You're childish the way you always try and show off to him. But of course. I've lived in his shadow too long. Even when we were kids, it was always him that did the exciting things, while I... Had... Made an alibi for him, I know. Oh, getting predictable, am I now? You've always been predictable about John. But of course. It's the story of my life, being predictable about my twin brother. You're obsessed with him, you know. Him and your mother. Whenever there's a pause in the conversation, it's always filled with you talking about one or the other. Infuriating, is it? Boring. Boring? Boy, I'm going down in the world. I do apologise. Ah, Oxford. Right on time. Should be the fares we pay. You never said how much. Oh, what do you mean? You got the tickets. Your mother's estate. Oh, ooh. Uh, a thousand or so, I think. Dad didn't have the final details. I'll get enough to pay for this jaunt, anyway. Ah, there's no need to look like that. You never knew her. She was neurotic, unbalanced, a bad mother. And when they found the car, you went out and got drunk. John and I both went out and got drunk. We were so glad that she'd gone. Adam, I am so bored with your mother. Do you know what I think? I don't think you could leave her. I don't think you wanted to. She couldn't be as bad as you say. No mother could. I think you feel guilty about being glad she went, so you make her out to be much worse than she actually was. Oh, don't be stupid. Not stupid. Objective. There is a difference. You can be objective if you try. You're just... What is it now? On... On the platform, look. Where? She... Well, she she's gone now. But it was my mother. What? It was her. I swear to God it was her. And she looked at me. She looked straight at me and smiled. Smiled like a witch out of hell. Oh! What is it, oh. Beth? Oh, my head. My head, something wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. 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 Now, what is it? Oh. From my head. The wolves. One still inside. Deep inside. Oh, there, there. Waiting. There. there. Oh. Now, that's all right. Oh. No. No, never all right now. Now, look. Do you want to go back? Oh. If you really feel bad, we can go back home. No. Have to go on now. That's all right. Everything changed now. Have to go on. Now, are you sure? Yes. Yes, yeah, all started now. The gate is open. Two wait in the shadows. Wait for night. At last, their paths have crossed again. Oh, 
I thought I saw Liz once. Liz? My sister, the one that was drowned. Oh, yeah. I was willing to swear I saw her, but it wasn't. It couldn't have been. It was just a girl with a striking resemblance to her. Now you're saying in your usual subtle way that I didn't see my mother on that platform. Of course you didn't. Your mother's dead. All the evidence was circumstantial. No real proof. No body was ever found, you mean. I saw my sister drown. She struggled and screamed. My father was holding me with one arm and reaching for her with the other. Help me, she was crying. Help me. I had dreams about it afterwards. I saw her drown. I saw them take her body from the water with a boat hook that snagged her side. I saw them bury her. I threw earth on top of her coffin. And yet, two years later, I was willing for an instant to swear that she was still alive. And it was in Oxford. Well, I don't care what you say, Jane. I saw my mother back there, saw as life itself. I can't explain it, but I know it was her. Okay, so my mind might have been playing tricks, but it was her back there. I'll swear it was. For the sake of discussion, I'll believe you. So, what are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to... Tell your father? Tell him and make him hopeful? Give him another breakdown when nothing comes of it? No, of course not. Then what about John? I'll send him a cable. What for? You've no proof. What can he do if he does come over? Hold your hand and tell you not to be such a silly little boy. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? See sense, Adam, for God's sake. Even if it was her, there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. As far as you're concerned, she's dead. Completely dead. Their paths are converging. Yes. The gate is opening. Yes. Soon it will be night. Uh, Jane, now, what are you going to have? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought, uh, I thought you were my wife. Funny man. Bess knows she meet you soon. Yes. Well, I, I'm sorry. Could tell. Pressure inside. Tell Bess to meet you. Yes. Um. <laughs> you look remarkably like my wife, and for a moment I, I, I thought. Uh... Shouldn't be here. Sarah, not like it if she know I'm here. Be angry. Not good for her. Half of best like you. Keep the wolves away. Wolves? In the shadows. They creep close. Can you feel them? No, but... Uh... Go now. Beth must go now. Mustn't meet her. Not yet. Look, are you with anyone? I know what you think. You think I'm wrong? Different? No, no, it, it's just that... Uh, I'm different. Very different. You'll see. Goodbye. Oh. Uh, goodbye? Strange girl. <sighs> oh, barman. Uh, sir? Uh, could I have a scotch, please? One scotch, yes, sir. And uh, a dry martini. A dry martini. Thank you. Ah, there you are. Have you ordered? Oh, hello. Yes, uh, a dry martini. Uh, all right? Fine. Why are you looking at me like that? Well, I've just been talking to a very strange girl just here a moment ago. Well? Well, she looks exactly like you, only younger. But that's not all. Here we go, she... sir. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Thank, bill, you. thank you. Yes, please. No. Cheers. Cheers. You were saying about this girl? Yes. Well, I'd mistaken her for you uh, from the back. Started talking to her. But she was she was very peculiar. Childish. How? Well, the way she spoke and what she said. She must have been about 25 or so, but when I spoke to her and then apologised, uh, when I realised she wasn't you, she didn't say, as an adult would, oh, that's all right, or really, how interesting, or whatever. No. She said, funny man. I bet she did. Your mouth drops open when you're surprised. No, it was really odd. She referred to herself in the third person as well, like a like a kid does who's not sure of his own identity. She was having you on. No, I don't think so. It was all too peculiar for that. Her eyes were sort of strange and haunted. It was as if she were on a completely different plane altogether. Another world. 
She started talking about shadows and wolves. And... Well, that proves she was having you on, doesn't it? She thought you were chatting her up. Oh, God, you use anything to start bitching, don't you? You just have to meet her. See what I mean? <laughs> oh, there you are, Beth. Now, I've been looking for you. I was getting quite worried. Been downstairs, meeting him. Who? Him. Funny man. Make Beth feel funny inside. Really? Uh, is he staying here, do you know? You want to see him? Tell him things? No, I'd just like to know who your friends are. His wife looks like me. He said his wife looks like me. Did you meet her? No. Mustn't meet her. Why not? Because... Be because I mustn't. I dear gave Beth a headache. Bad. Mustn't meet her. Did he say you mustn't meet her? No. No, she doesn't know. She doesn't know yet about the wolves. Oh, Beth. Not yet. Not here yet. Coming tonight. Yes, but... Oh, I won't lecture you again about being different, but if you do meet new people, it's best that I'm with you. Beth knows she's different. I know, darling, but not everybody understands that. Some men give me looks. I've seen them giving me looks. I know. But as long as you stay with me, you'll be safe. No one will hurt you. Beth love you, Sarah. I love you too, Beth. Now listen, I must go out. And you promise you won't leave the room? Can I watch television? Yes, of course. Of course you can. Another drink? Hmm? Another? Uh, no, thanks. I wonder what she wants. Who? Over there, by the bar. She's staring at me. Oh? Where? Well, she's just come in. Let's see. Look, she's coming over. Probably wondering why we're staring at her. Uh, excuse me. Oh. I wonder if you might help me. Uh, help you? Did you speak to a girl earlier on? My sister. I'm asking, you see, because she said she spoke to someone. Well, I did speak to a girl, yes. About 25, and you might have thought her manner was a bit odd. Childish, perhaps. See? Uh, yes, I, I think it must have been her. She looked um, very much like my wife here. Yes, she said. That's how I knew it was probably you. Um, please, may I... Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, 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 no. We're just having a drink. Uh, would, you, would you like a drink? No, thank you. I'm Sarah. Sarah Steedman. Adam. Adam Oxton. Uh, and my wife, Jane. Well, how do you do? Hello. <clears throat> I'm... I'm sorry to barge in like this. But, oh, well, we don't mind. Our conversation tends to go round in circles anyway. I felt I had to speak to you about my sister, Beth. Her name's Beth. Beth Harris. <sighs> I wanted to explain about her, you see, in case you thought... Well... Go on. Well, she's not normal. Physically, she's 25, but her mental age is seven. Some people don't seem to understand this, and it can be awkward. Men, in particular, well, they don't appreciate it. Well, has she, has she always been so, uh, so childish? No. She had an accident seven years ago. She used to be interested in amateur dramatics. Oh, man, I mean, she wasn't an actress, but she enjoyed doing backstage work. And... But in one production, she did the lighting. It was in a church hall, and the wiring was old, and she jury-rigged a circuit direct from the mains. Halfway through the dress rehearsal, everything shorted out at once, and there was a flash, an explosion, and she was thrown 15 or 20 feet. Oh. Well, she was in hospital for two months in a coma, and when she recovered, she's like she is now. Childlike. Of course, she's very, very lucky to be that. The doctors say she shouldn't have survived. The charge she received was lethal. Poor girl. Physically, she's fine. But mentally, it's very difficult for her. She has the mind of a child locked inside a woman's body. Can they do anything for her? No. No, I can't. Tell me, did you, did you mention wolves to you? Well, yes, she did. Uh, as a matter of fact, I... I didn't really grasp what she meant. Well, she has these recurring... 
but her fantasies about wolves and it worries me badly, but I always I try and play them down and treat them like a joke. You see, she sees things that aren't there. Or rather, they aren't there to us, although they're very real to her. A psychiatrist said that the shock that she received somehow made her conscious mind very close to her unconscious, that it removed the barrier between them, her curtain of reality, he called it. All those dark thoughts that lurk in the back of our minds are real to her. Her wolves, she calls them. She lives half in and out of a very strange world. It's a world of wind and snow and shadows with wolves. Hungry wolves, always prowling. The psychiatrist elaborated great theories about this, and he said that Beth has managed to give shape and form to those basic fears and emotions that we all have inside us. Things like fear and anger and lust. He even tried hypnosis with her. He asked her to describe herself in this other world. I'm small and white, she said, and dead. It frightened me. We haven't let him try hypnosis since. We? Yes, my husband, Ralph, and myself. We took her in after she came out of hospital. She couldn't live on her own, and so she joined us in Oxford. Oxford? Yes, but recently her behaviour has been getting worse and more unpredictable. I wrote to Ralph, he's in Canada at the moment, asking him what I should do, and two days ago I got a telegram from him. I was to come here today, and he's booked us in for a few days, and he's flying over and joining us tomorrow. Why? Well, I don't know. Oh, I knew he was coming back anyway. He has a week off, but one would have thought that Beth would be better off at home, but... Well, Ralph knows what he's doing, I'm sure. Have you been here long? Well, no, no, we got in this afternoon. Well, I hope you like it. <clears throat> anyway, um, I've got to be going. <clears throat> I felt I had to see you because... No, 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 that's quite all right. I quite understand. I can um, try and keep away from you if you like. No, no, no need, no need for that. Well, good evening. Um, thank you for listening. Well, I'm glad you came, as a matter of fact. Uh, my wife thought I'd been exaggerating. I'm sorry, what? About the resemblance between them. Oh, I see, yes. Yes. Well, good evening. Yes, uh, good evening. Good evening. Huh. Well, you know what she really wanted, don't you? Who? Well, Sarah, or whatever her name was. She wanted to satisfy herself that you are a gentleman. What? Well, it was what she was hinting at all the way through. Some men don't appreciate it. Was she attractive? Yes. Quite attractive. She looked like you, remember. Mm. I can imagine some men would find that most appealing. A child's mind in a woman's body. An attractive woman's body. I wonder how she sees desire. As a wolf or a ram? And is it enticing or threatening? You have a disgusting mind. No, logical. Just logical. <laughs> Who's that? Is that you, uh, Beth? Beth's been waiting for you. Knew you'd come. Now, look, what are you doing out here? Your sister She will doesn't be... matter. No, she'll be worried about you. I know, but Beth had to come. I'd better take you back in. No, not yet. Not go back yet. Oh, come on. No. Oh, what's wrong? I'm sure she won't be that angry. Too... Too much to do. Very hard and... Danger. Danger? Yes, I... I, ca I can't... No, no, no. Oh, what, is it? what is it? What's wrong? Head. Hurts. 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 Beth. But... Beth, no. To, to, to stop. Stop. Stop! What's the matter, Beth? What is it? Nothing. Nothing for now. Don't look so surprised, Adam. I've been wanting to meet you for so long. Good God. Stay close. You must stay close. I can't be here for long. But Adam, I... look at me. Look at me, Adam. Look me in the eyes. Deep in the eyes. But I... Don't... You must trust me. You must say you trust me. Trust me, not the child. You must not trust the child. I... 
Say you trust me. You must say you trust me. Trust you. I trust you. Good. The child is now a random factor. A feather being blown by powers far beyond her control. You must not believe all she says. Accept her, but place no trust in her. Do you understand? I understand. I'm sorry to do this, but time is short. Very short. And it's dangerous to draw on the power for too long at the moment. You must retain this moment in your mind. Deep in your mind. So that when I come again, you will not be surprised. To you, this body is a child until I come again. Do you understand? I understand. Your wife... I'm not sure where she fits, but she is important. Take care of her, Adam. Take great care of her. She and the child are bound inexorably together. That I know. I have to delve further inside to find out. There. I must leave you now. There. No. I want to... No. You must not touch me. Not yet. Not until I know it's safe. There. Is that you? I must go. Do not forget me. Deep inside, do not forget me. Must not forget you. <laughs> you do look silly standing there. What? Oh, <laughs> oh where? Oh, there you are, Beth. What are you doing out here? Doesn't he look silly? Perhaps he's seen a ghost. Oh, you are naughty. I can't leave you alone for five minutes. But... Wanted to see him. Headache told me had to see him. I hope she hasn't been disturbing you, Mr. Oxton. No, 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 that's all right. Your wife told me you were out here and... We've only just met. I was, I was just about to bring her in. Now, come on, Beth. It's time for bed. Yes. Beth's tired. Now, say good night to Mr. Oxton. Oh, Adam, please. Oh, say good night to Adam. Good night, Adam. Good night, Beth. Good night. Good night. Now, come on, darling. It's getting late. A nice little tete-a-tete -tete you were having. Oh, what are you doing here? Mm, just taking a walk. I thought it was you. I'm surprised you weren't creeping through the shrubbery, trying to listen. Perhaps I was. Were you? Wouldn't you like to know? Look, I'm tired, Jane. I don't want to bicker. No, just flirt. I hadn't mm. arranged to meet her. Oh, I wish I could believe you. For God's sake. Why are you so unreasonable about a girl I hardly know? Because I know you. I know sometimes what you're feeling before you know it yourself. I can sense it. Ever since you've met that girl, you've changed in some subtle way. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's there. Like Helen. Oh, it's there, and you know it. What is? Well, it's nothing I can put my finger there's on. There's nothing but... you can put your finger on, because there's nothing there. You've got to stop these insane suspicions, Jane, or... Or what? Look, I'm tired. Let's go to bed. Oh. Come on, let's go to bed. We won't sort anything out with another argument. Aren't you in bed yet, Beth? No sleep tonight for Beth. Oh, come away from that window. You might catch cold. I can hear them. I can see them. They come close. Very close from the shadows. Two come first to let the others through. I can see them. They look like us, but, but their teeth are sharp, very sharp. Soon they will touch and, and reach out, tearing the world and Beth apart. Touch me now. This time. Touch me now. Yes, it is time. My hands. The gate is opening. Take my hands. Yeah.
are here. Yes, we are here. And soon the wolves of death will follow. Yes, and he knows. He knows we are here. Poor pawn. He knows. And so does she. She will try and get close to him again. <laughs> <laughs> So real. A real night. A real nightmare. You all right now? Yeah. Something about Beth must have sparked it off. That unconscious world of hers. Oh God, it was. It was so real. Mm. Yet malignant somehow. There was this plain, completely flat, covered in snow, dark with shadow. And there was a wind blowing and... And wolves? Yes. Howling in the background. Mm, they would be. Well, you might joke, but... I was terrified. A piano was playing. A tune my mother used to play. And, and in the middle of the plane, there were two figures. Two obscene figures spinning together, laughing. The faster they spun, the more things warped and twisted. And then everything came apart and... Well, I, I woke up. Oh, pretty standard nightmare by the sound of it. Well, yes, I suppose so. There was one up on falling off a cliff and never reaching the ground. Mm. Who were they, these figures? Well, as might be expected, one was my mother and, and the, the other, other was, was John. John. Yes, well, it had to be, didn't it? Mm. You know, you must be right about me being obsessed with them. But it wasn't really John. It was, it, it was him, but... But it wasn't. He was like a mirror reflection, inverted, right for left and left for right. He was, he was wrong, somehow. Evil. Mm. What are you doing? Oh, just getting a cigarette. Oh. Whatever else that nightmare did, it certainly woke me up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you want one? No, thanks. Drink of water or anything? No, thank you, no. <sighs> I think this might be the first unbitchy conversation we've had today. It's the first conversation we've had today. What? Here. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, even I can't bitch all the time. Oh, God, why do we fight? Why, why we suddenly seem to stop fighting now? Because it's late, I suppose, and dark, stolen time. Yes. There's always something illicit about doing things when everyone else is asleep. Yes, even if it's only holding a non-bitchy conversation. Mm. <laughs> oh, poor Adam. I put you through it sometimes, don't I? Well, I give as good as I get. I can take it. Do you hate it? Well, the bitching is, of course. Oh, so do I. But it's second nature to me. I don't know why I do it. I think it's because I need you so much and hate you for it. When you're not with me, I don't feel alive. It's as if I were feeding from you somehow. Seeing you angry, feeling you're upset. They're almost necessary to me, like a drug. Oh, it's all very perverse, I know. An inverted jealousy, a twisted possessiveness. Sorry. Sometimes when you're talking about your mother, I think you could be describing me. <laughs> oh, no. She had different ways of making me squeal. Mm. Was your dream very bad? Yes, it was a genuine 24-carat nightmare. It was alien and horrifying. Poor Beth. I wonder if her subconscious had anything like that in it. it. Scared the life out of me, but then I was able to wake up. She frightens me. Oh, Beth? Hmm. Well, the idea of her looking like me and talking like a child frightens me. Also... Well, go on. Well, Liz looked like me, only younger. And, and do you remember I said I thought I saw her once in Oxford? Mm. Well, they come from Oxford. 
Suppose it was Beth I saw. Well. It upset me then. Reminded me of seeing Liz drown, brought it all back. All these feelings of guilt. I should have been the one that died, you see, not her. I was the one that slipped in, couldn't swim. She tried to save me. She could have done, but her foot caught. And... Oh, it was a chance in a million that she died. I don't want to meet someone who reminds me of her. You might think it very stupid of me that I'm sticking my head in the sun, but... Well, she doesn't want to meet you anyway. She seems to associate you with her wolves. And her talking like a child disturbs me, too. I can look in a mirror and imagine my reflection. Oh, uh, well, John and I never had that difficulty. One of our favourite pastimes is pretending to be mirrors copying each other. <laughs> you always were ham-fisted at changing the subject. Yes, I know. Do you remember those theories you used to have? Only too well. But who's changing the subject yet again? Well, maybe it's all part of the same thing. He used, when we were kids, um, 14 or so, mm -hmm. he used to call me his doppelganger. Did he tell you? No. Yeah. yeah. It was a theory or concept he picked up from German legends or somewhere and embroidered in his own inimitable fashion. See, a doppelganger is your other half, your dark brother or sister, who lives in an alternate universe, a sort of limbo on the other side of beyond. <sighs> Sounds a typical John idea to me. Oh, it was. <laughs> Reality, he said, is very thin between our world and theirs, and these creatures, these dark brothers of myth, are just waiting to pounce. Well, he wrapped it up in a lot of scientific jargon, of course. He was, he was doing no levels at the time. A mutual exclusion clause, for example. Now, a doppelganger and his double, it's a bit of a tongue twister, they can't exist in the same world at the same time. Uh, if one does manage to cross into this world, then his counterpart flickers out and goes to limbo in exchange. He used to paint a picture of a world full of people winking on and off like Christmas tree lights. Oh, he had ideas, all right. Still has. Yes. Funny thing to talk about at three o'clock in the morning. Well, I expect my nightmare has something to do with it. Oh? Tearing the fabric of reality. And the man I saw needn't necessarily have been John. Could have been my own doppelganger coming to get me. Hardly. Or you would have flickered out, remember? Ah, yes. Now, according to him, identical twins, with the exception that proved the rule, which, of course, was no answer. No, I just think it was his way of pointing out the differences between us. In many ways, we were... are reflections of each other. Possibly that's why... Hmm? Go on. Well... Why you and I seem to fight so much? You didn't fight with him, I know. You and he seem to interlock somehow, but... You and I, well... It's often the opposite, isn't it? Yes. What do you think will happen to us? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I... I'm tired. <laughs> I'm mm. sidestepping now. Me. Sorry. Oh, don't oh, do that. Oh, dear. It's catching. Mm. Oh. <sighs> do you want to make love? Do you? Well, if you want. Oh, I am tired. I'm oh, sorry. It was just a thought. We haven't for... Jane, let's always stay friends, whatever happens. Mm, that sounds very dramatic. Well, I, I've enjoyed our talk. I feel close to you again. Me to you. But tomorrow... Here's another day. Yes. Do you fancy Beth? In what way? in the way that men usually fancy women. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I'm not saying any more in case you accuse me of protesting too much. Very wise. Because there's something there. Something between you. Oh, I'm not bitching. I'm saying it as a simple fact. Based on intuition? Yes, maybe. Maybe. Hello. 
Oh. Hello. Been in the sea. All wet. So you are. Is your sister... Over there. Sneaked away to see you. She think Beth's swimming. Where is she? What? The one who looks like me. Where is she? Oh, Jane. Uh, she's gone into town to do some shopping. Good. Mustn't meet her. You look funny. No, I'm sorry. I was just... Mustn't look funny at Beth. No, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to. It's... Look, what did we talk about last night? Nothing. You angry. Beth out late. No, there was more. I'm sure there was more. Seeing you now. No, nothing more. Yes, there was. There was something you said. No, nothing more. I mustn't frighten Beth. You, you, you went like that. And, don't, and... don't, don't frighten Beth. Stop, stop. Stop! I said not to trust the child, Adam. Not to trust the child. But, but... You are I... not surprised I'm me again. You must not be surprised I'm me again. No, not surprised. I regret doing this to you. But, Adam, listen. There is danger. Last night, some... Adam... What happened to your mother? My mother? Is she dead? We don't know. No one knows. She went missing seven years ago. It could have been suicide. She took the car. Two days later, it was found near the top of a cliff. In it were her bag, clothes, money, everything. The weather had been stormy, the seas high. No body was ever found. You hated her? Yes. She was random. A bad mother. Punishment was arbitrary, harsh. She would play the piano. The same tune over and over. She would stoop, smiling over the keys, watching her hands crawl like spiders. I was frightened. We were all frightened, even John. John? My brother. Identical twin brother. Of course. A twin. The last bit falls in place. You must hate him. Yes. I hate him. Why? He was all that I was not. All that I wanted to be. He would touch things and they would come alive. Respond. I saw him looking like me and doing things I could not do. Jane loved him, still loves him. He turned her emotions inside out and then discarded her. I married her. It was wrong. Your brother, he must be far away now. Physically far away. How far? Canada. Canada. And Ralph comes back tonight. They must have met. They must have. Ralph is well-meaning but knows too little. John knows where you are. Yes. I see. Now listen. Listen close. Understand and obey. The child must never touch your wife. She must never take her hands. I have kept her away so far, but it drains my power and drives her ever closer to her wolves. And they've gained dominance over her. So the child must not touch your wife. Better if you killed her first. Tell, what must not happen? The child must not touch my wife. Never forget that, Adam. Never forget that. And when I call you, you must come. Come quickly to me, as fast as you can. Do you understand? I understand. When you call me, I must come. Do not forget these things, Adam. Do not forget them. I will not forget. I must leave now. Gather strength. For tonight, when the shadows are long, the wolves will try and come, and we must stop them. When I have gone, the child will be here again, and you will have forgotten me, like you forgot before. I will forget you, like before. Goodbye, Adam. Until tonight. Goodbye. Goodbye.
You burn yourself, silly man. What? Burn your fingers. What? <laughs> a cigarette. <laughs> You're silly. Burn yourself, silly man. Yes. I am, aren't I? I hope the wolves do get you. I hope the wolves get everybody. this morning? No. Been on the beach, where? Oh. I thought I saw you for a minute on the other side of the street, near the church. Hmm? Well, Just a glimpse. Uh, no, I, I, I've not been into town. Was I on my own? No. There was a woman as well. Oh, hire a car and get a land's end. Oh, you're suddenly very enterprising. Well, it'd get us out and... Uh, it's clouding over. It might even rain. And you, you don't want to stay in all day, do you? No, I suppose not. Good. I'll go and see about a car then, shall I? Hmm. Oh, don't lean so far out of the window, Beth. It might fall out. I must be here soon. Ralph? He won't be here for another hour at least. No, sooner. No, he'd be here sooner. He probably hardly got off at Heathrow. No, not far away now. Not far away. I wonder what he's brought you. He always brings presents when he's been away, doesn't he? Not worried about presents. Beth just want Ralph. Going to meet him. Oh, but Beth... Won't go far. Just down to the front. Wait for him. Don't worry. It's a bizarre way of ending things, isn't it? Come to a place like this and walk naked over the edge. Well, if you're going to get morbid... Could you do it? With sufficient motivation, I suppose. I couldn't. Uh, if I wanted to do myself in, I'd turn on the gas, take some sleeping pills and curl up into a tight ball. What would you do? I've never thought... Oh, come on. Everyone's thought of how they'd do away with themselves. Not me. I don't think about it. I read an article once. It said that suicide... Hasn't it sunk in yet, Adam, that I don't want to talk about it? Oh, suit yourself. Well, it just depresses me, that's all. Why? Thinking of doing it yourself, are you? Oh, I'm going back to the car. All right, so we'll talk about something else. You want a cup of coffee? No, no thanks. Stick of rock! Who have actually been here? I don't want anything, thanks. Oh, I've just thought of an amusing remark. We should be able to talk about suicide without coming to a dead end, surely. <laughs> Very funny. Well, at least I tried. Oh! Ah! Careful! Oh. Here. Oh, God, your arm's trembling. You OK? Yes, yes, it's this wind. It, it's making me shiver. It's not that cold, surely. No, but, but it's the noise. I hate the noise. Why? It reminds me of something. What? Well, I don't know. It, it just frightens me. Beth, hello. Oh, Beth, miss you. <laughs> Beth, pleased to see you again. And uh, Ralph's pleased to see Beth. Oh, oh. you like me to death. Uh, oh, no, where's Sarah? Inside. Mm -hmm. Knew you'd be here soon. Knew you'd be early. Clever girl. Now, come on, let's go in. Are you having a nice time? Beth, are you having a nice time? Pleased to see you. <laughs> same old Beth. Elusive as ever. No, not the same. Changed. Oh, uh, for better or worse? Don't know. Oh, well, never mind. We'll have a good chat about it later. Uh, tell me, have you met anyone? Only Adam. Adam? Don't like him. Make me feel wrong. His wife, she looks like Beth. Really? And that's why he makes you feel wrong, is it? No. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Eh. What does she think about it? Haven't met her. Mustn't meet her. Oh, oh, well, we'll have to alter that, won't we? After all, she's the reason you're here. I don't understand. Oh, well, never mind. Let's find Sarah, shall we? Oh. That must be the famous Ralph. Sorry? Yes. Over there, at the bar, with Sarah. Mm. He must be her husband. So? 
Have you well, I just thought you might be interested. Yes, nice. She's obviously going to introduce him. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like you to meet my husband, Ralph. Ralph Adam. Adam Oxton. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my wife, Jane. How do you do? Good evening. I'm very pleased to meet you both. I've been looking forward to it. Uh, oh? Well, I've been hearing a lot about you, about both of you. Oh, uh, from Beth, I suppose. <laughs> and others. Uh, please, may I... Uh... Yes, yes, of course, of course. Thank you. Uh, darling, <coughs> hadn't you better go and make sure Beth's all right? Oh, she's OK. She... No, I think you ought to. You know what she could be like. Well, really, darling, I'd feel a lot happier if you would. Oh, very well. I'll bring her down. Uh, no, please, you know how crowds upset her. Oh, but she's so looking forward to seeing... Yes, why not bring her down? I'd love to meet her. I haven't met her yet. Uh, but uh, uh, later, for now, please, Sarah, do as I say. Please. please. Very well, if you like. I'll see you all later then. Yes, yes. Uh, bye. Bye bye. <sighs> An unfortunate incident. Rather clumsy on my part, I'm afraid. I felt it would be better if we could talk without her or Beth here. Talk? Talk about what? Well, it's not a coincidence we're together at this hotel. I planned it that way. What? Planned it? Yes. Perhaps I should mention your brother sent his regards from Canada. What? You know John? Yes, very well. We're colleagues in the same university. Uh, this isn't the right way to start. The story's complicated. It pivots around Beth. Beth? Yes. Uh, first, let me ask you what you know of her. Uh, what has Sarah told you? Ooh, well, that uh, she had an accident uh, with electricity yeah. and that she was in hospital. No, none of that is true. But your wife said... No, none. My wife believes it to be true, but it is not. I knew I'd have to tell you the truth. And because her heart is weak, I preferred her not to be here when I did. It would only upset her. <laughs> but Beth's her sister. I mean, surely she knows No, no, that about... is not true either. My wife has no sister. She is an only child. What? Beth and Sarah are not sisters. There was no accident, no electric shock, nothing. But why should she make... My... Why my wife believes it will, I hope, become clear. For she does believe it, and so did I for a time. <sighs> Six years ago... My wife and I were driving back to Oxford after staying with friends in Lincoln. It had been snowing, and uh, there was still the tail end of a blizzard blowing, so we were moving slowly, hugging the edge of the road. That is when we first met Beth. There was a white figure huddled into a ball, her head in her hands, sheltering in the lee of a stone wall. We stopped and I went to see. It was Beth. She was naked, white with cold, shivering. I touched her on the shoulder. Even through my gloves, I could tell she was as cold as ice. She was saying, help me, help me, help me, help me, over and over. In a sad, pathetic voice, I, I asked her who she was, and she told me. I asked her where she lived. She giggled and said, with you. <laughs> I, I thought at the time maybe she was delirious. We got her to the car, put some spare clothes on her, gave her some brandy. She fell asleep in the back seat, her head cradled on my wife's shoulder. We decided to take her back to Lincoln to the hospital to inform the police. I turned the car round, we started back. We never got there. Why not? Yeah, because after we'd driven a few miles, she woke up. I can remember her eyes staring at me in the driving mirror. She looked at me, then at my wife, staring calmly with those strange, ancient eyes. Once more, I turned round and headed this time for Oxford. I, I knew she was my sister-in-law. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It, it may sound so, but it is true. Beth needed, at that point, to be tended, cared for, loved. So she used us. She became my wife's sister, her younger sister. <laughs> what better way to obtain an instant family? <sighs> well, even... Even accepting what you say is true, how? Be because she, at that time she had a strange power. A power that enabled her to influence people. 
events, things. She was able to reach out with her mind and move people like pawns to the dictates of her will. And now? She is still able to, but it seems more difficult for her. Uh, once, a year or so ago, I asked her to throw some dice. I told her to try and make as many double sixes as she could. She threw 50, one after the other, before she became distressed and complained that her head hurt. I tried other tests with her, and they were equally revealing. Uh, but I had to be cautious, because I didn't want to upset her, or my wife. Well, to Sarah, Beth was her sister, suffering from the after-effects of a near-fatal accident, but by then I had begun to accept that she wasn't my sister-in-law. What? No, 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 no. Go, go on, please. Thank you. Now, to go back to that day six years ago, we got back to Oxford at dawn. The snow had stopped, the air was crisp. We put Beth to bed. She slept right through to the following morning. I believe now that the effort of forcing Sarah and me to accept her as one of the family had taxed her power, even then, to the limit. But we had accepted her. We had her name, a place in life, everything. <laughs> if you ask Sarah, she'll tell you how Beth did at school. <coughs> how she cut her leg open when she was six. A whole detailed history was fed in during that car journey. We believed she had been in hospital after an accident. The story Sarah told you. Well, it was only much later, much later, that I began to wonder. Why? I, I still had fragmentary memories of finding her in the snow. And when other evidence appeared, my doubts grew stronger. Evidence? Well, the small things started me off. I knew, or I thought I knew, that Beth had been a bridesmaid at my wedding. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the wedding photo, she wasn't there. I asked Sarah, and she looked confused for a moment and then explained that Beth had had to leave early or something. Well, on its own, it was nothing, but there were other things, small things that didn't fit. Her documentary evidence, mainly. The previous year's Christmas list uh, omitted her. She wasn't mentioned in her father's will. No post ever came for her. No friends ever visited. <laughs> she had none of the paraphernalia of a past life. Apart from what I thought I knew in my mind, there was nothing. Well, for intellectual satisfaction, I decided on a systematic checking out of everything I thought was true. None of it ever happened. Nor could I find out where she came from. Beth has no history before that night six years ago. She is a child woman who appeared one night in the middle of a snowstorm and made us think she was a relation. She appeared from nowhere. And you never told Sarah? No. I wasn't sure her heart would stand up to it. But Beth is good for her. She is a child and a companion and very loving. She may only be a substitute to my wife's baron. But I, I wouldn't do anything that might take her away from us. Well, why are you telling us all this? And, and why yes, did you come... Yes, that's what I want to know. Why are you spinning such a preposterous story? Oh, Jane. Well, do you believe him? Well... Well, do you, Adam? Do you believe this rubbish? Yes, I think I do. Well, I don't. I'm sorry. I think the whole thing is totally stupid. No, I'm sorry about this. No, it this. doesn't I... matter. May I ask you, Mrs. Oxton, why I should tell you such an elaborate tale if it is not the truth? Well, how should I know? Doubtless you'll come to what you consider the point sooner or later. Yes. Yes, I will. Well, I don't want to hear it. Good evening. Jane! I have come 3,000 miles to speak to you, Mrs. Oxton, and to ask for your help. That's your hard luck. Beth concerns you and your sister. Liz? But her sister's dead. dead. I know. She was drowned. She was drowned on the same day that we found Beth. February the 3rd, 1970. Well, what of it? That is what I hope to tell you. Now, please, Mrs. Oxton, sit down and listen and try to accept what I say as true. Please. Please, Jane. Oh, very well. Thank you. Now, a few months ago, I took up a temporary exchange lectureship in Canada. There I met John, your brother. We became friends, and as friends do, we showed each other photographs of our families and friends. It was then I noticed, we both noticed, the striking resemblance between you, Mrs. Oxton, and Beth. Now, John, as you must know, is fond of speculative theories and spinning ideas just as much as I. I told him, as I have told you, of my belief in Beth's peculiar origins, her strange powers. In return, he told me what he knew of you, of how you met soon after your sister's death, 
of how you became close and eventually he told me everything. One thing became evident. There is a curious link between Beth and your dead sister. Both were called Elizabeth. Both are exactly the same age as far as we could tell or would have been had your sister lived. As far as I could discover through an agent working in this country, your sister and Beth are identical. You hired someone to find out about Liz? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's remarkable the amount of fact you can discover about a dead person even after six years if you know how to look. And I employed an expert. But why? Because Beth is an enigma I wish to solve. And you've solved it now, of course. No, well, perhaps, perhaps not. All I have now is a theory. The only one we could construct that fitted the facts. That explains why she is identical to your sister. Why she appeared on the same day that your sister was drowned. Why she is so childlike. Why she had this power she had. This otherwise inexplicable ability to mould things by her wishes. After a build-up like that, it should be good. I think so. Beth is the doppelganger of your dead sister. What is happening? Can you feel them? He is there, from far away. He has theories. He believes them, wants to help. Help who? The child. But he helps us. Unknowing, he helps us. The shadows lengthen. It is time for us to go out. Open the door. A church. An odd place for us to have been sheltering from the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be standing long. No. Not when the wolves spread forth. Nothing will be standing. It will be desolate. Empty. Timeless. Where's Ralph? Beth want him. He's busy at the moment. Saying things about me. Things he thinks are true. He's got your best interests at heart, darling. Beth, no, but... What? Should stop him, but can't. Something wrong. You should be happy now he's here. Yes. But... Sarah? Yes? Miss Beth, when she goes. Goes? Goes where? Soon. Must go soon. Miss me. But you're not going anywhere, darling. You're staying with me and Ralph. I don't know. Want to stay, but... Say you miss me. Would miss me if I went. Yes. Of course we'd miss you. We love you, Beth. Love you very much. Never hurt you. Save you. Save you. And you really believe in this doppelganger theory? Then? As a name for a working hypothesis to explain you... things, yes. But, God, that, that was only something John thought up during adolescence. It was just one of his wild ideas. He was always dreaming them up. I'm a scientist and therefore used to finding a theory to fit the facts. The idea of an alternative universe, if you like, isn't new. It can mathematically be shown to be feasible. I bet it can. And John also believed this. As I do, as a theory to be proved or disproved. What, that there are other people waiting to come and take us over? <laughs> no, nothing so dramatic as that. Uh, my thesis is coldly logical. If people exist in this other universe, well, then they will be as unaware of us as we are of them. To them, we would be the doppelgangers if indeed they'd even conceived of our existence. Now suppose for a moment that what I say is true. Yeah. That somewhere, somewhere on the other side of, well, call it reality, there is another world, parallel with this one. Events there keeping step with our world here. <laughs> the only difference being between us in the basic energy structure. Their energy being negative, ours positive. Well, well, I... <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry if I'm getting technical. 
it's almost impossible to express this highly mathematical concept in layman's terms. But you, you can accept my word that the idea of another universe is scientifically very attractive. Mm. Much of what we don't understand can be explained in terms of a steady seep of energy from one universe to the other. Well, this is all very interesting, and I'm sure your students would be enthralled. But what, what has it got has to... It to deep with energy? And my sister. If Beth is from that world, then she could be a channel for this power. She could use it to accomplish the things she can and has done. We've only got your word. She's done anything. Yeah, I know, but I've gone to a great deal of trouble in arranging this meeting. Accomplish the things she... Trust what I say. Do not distrust my sincerity. Uh, you said... Uh, you said that your theory could be proved or disproved. I think so. You know that at the moment Beth is very childish, hardly normal. Yes. Well, I believe that this is because she's still half in and half out of that other world. She's a gate, if you like, through which the power flows. Now, it's this force running through her mind and body that is distorting her, stopping her personality from developing, making her a prey to her fears, her phobias. Her wolves. Exactly. Mm. Now, if we could close the gate, divorce her completely from that other world, she would become herself again. Who is? Uh, sorry? You said become herself again. Well, who is herself? Your sister. What? Oh. Yes, sorry. I am convinced that somewhere within her mind, buried deep beneath the surface, there lies another personality. Your sister. You're mad. Jane. He's mad. <clears throat> My sister's dead. Liz is dead. She, she was drowned. Jane, and, uh, please. It's obscene what you're saying. It's obscene. And, and I don't want to listen to any more. Jane. No, let her go. But, 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 please. I want her to help me, but not to help under pressure. She'll have to think about it herself. Oh, maybe you'll rise. I don't know. What is it you wanted to do? Very little, really. In fact, I had hoped it might have been accomplished by accident even before I got here. I want them to forge a link. A link? In, in what way? Well, I know from my researches that she and her sister were very close. I want your wife, somehow, to make contact. To talk with her. <laughs> Play games together, perhaps, I'm not sure. But I know one thing. The trivia of shared remembrances, even after seven years, should be a potent force. And you came over from Canada just for that? Well, I had arranged to come anyway. I thought it an opportune time. Also, I feel time is short. For some weeks now, my wife's letters to me have been disturbing. Beth seems to be moving out of the relative period of stability she enjoyed into new areas of fear and disruption. I am hoping that with your wife's help, I can nip it in the bud. Make Beth complete, rounded, whole. The idea seems to disturb you. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm sorry. I think I ought to go and see her. Beth? No. My wife. I must go and see her. Make sure she's... I must go and see her. Yeah. This is near enough. Yes. Reality is thin enough here. They will come come to their deaths. We just have to wait. Can you feel them yet? One comes. The child. She comes. She is in control. And the other? He will send her to us. She has tried in vain to get close to him again. But he will send her to us. Hello. I wondered how long it would be before you found me. Well, I wanted to see if you were all right. Why, shouldn't I be? Well, I just thought, uh... Oh, it's ridiculous. All he says is ridiculous. Doppelgangers, alternative universes, energy flowing from one to the other, it's ridiculous. You didn't believe him. What do you think? Adam, let's leave. Let's get away from here. Why? Well, because ever since we've got here, things have gone wrong. First you seeing your mother, and then that girl, and... and now I feel everything gaining a sort of momentum, and I'm caught up in it. We're caught up in it, and it's changing us. It's changing you, and it's changing me. Well, I must say, we haven't been bitching each other so much. Oh, please, Adam, I am serious. I'm frightened. I'm frightened and scared. Well, and... What of? I don't know. I want to be close to you again, and, and all you seem to do is slide away. Well, I don't mean to. But you do. I feel as if I'm running after you, but, but never getting anywhere, while you're just standing still. While sliding away at the same time. Oh, for God's sake. 
Look, is it, is it something Ralph said? No. Oh, yes. Well, I don't know. Sarah, then. No, it's nothing to do with that. Well, what is it to do with? I don't know, I tell you. I just don't bloody know. Look, I admit that this hasn't exactly been the sort of holiday we'd planned. Well, not so far. Oh, uh, don't uh, start being reasonable about it, please. Oh, come on, let's go back. No, I don't want to go in. I just want to leave now, this minute. Well, now you are being unreasonable. No, I'm not. I just want to go right now, this minute. Look, Jane, you're upset. I, I, see... I know, I can see I'm upset, but I want to leave now. Look, I'm... come on, inside. No, Let's don't! Your voice down. Why? Why should I? Oh, Adam, take me away. Take me away. Right now, please. Please. Look, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take you upstairs to our room and then hunt out a sleeping pill or, or something for you. Well, how about that, then, eh? Eh, Jane? Oh, please, Adam. Take me away from this place. Take me away and hide me. Hide you? Hide you from what? From the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Jane, really? Ralph? Ralph? Have you seen Beth? Hmm? She went out. Oh, hello, darling. I was just coming up. What did you say? Beth is not in her room. I went out for a minute and... Ralph, what are you up to? Up to? Making us come here out of the blue and then talking to Adam. No, there's nothing to worry about, honestly, darling. It's to do with Beth, isn't it? You're trying to do something with her. Don't him. worry yourself, darling, But please. I do. I can't help it. This evening no, when you said... She's probably me... in the garden. You know how she likes the open air. I am not a child, Ralph. No, of course not. I'm sorry. But she is probably out there chatting to Adam and Jane. And what are they doing out there? Oh, talking over something I told them. What? Nothing, nothing. Come on. Let's see if she's there, all right? Hello. Hello, Beth. We've been waiting for you. Yes. Beth knows you've been waiting. But where is she? Be here soon. Wanting to run away, but coming here. Good. Go and get her, my son. With pleasure. Don't hurt her. No. Don't hurt her. Not yet. No. Not yet. She's probably just round the corner. Ralph, please tell me what's going Sarah, on. Sarah, please. You know what the doctor said. You mustn't upset yourself. But if you knew, tell me, then I wouldn't oh, be um, upset. Oh, Adam, have you seen Beth? No, I haven't. Oh, uh, well, how about Jane? Uh, has she She's been... on the beach or somewhere. She might even have left. Left? Yes. Why the hell did you have to come along with your high-flown ideas? Fancy telling her that Beth's some sort of ghost. What? Shut up, you bloody fool. What do you mean, some sort of ghost? No, nothing. He nothing? means nothing. In case you didn't know, your husband here claims you've got no sister, never had one. No sister? Would you please? No, Stop. of course not. That'd be too simple. Adam. You met her in a snowstorm, remember? A snowstorm near Lincoln. Lincoln? Yes. She was oh. white with cold, huddled up, naked. Take no notice, darling. Take no Can't notice. Can't you remember her eyes staring at you in the car, oh. making you think... Oh. Oh. You bloody oh. fool. Oh. Snowstorm. God. Oh, God. What's wrong? Her heart, of course, her heart. Oh. I, I'm sorry, I... Her back. I, I, her back. There's some pills in her back. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I, I'm sorry, I... Just get her I'm pills, sorry, I, for God's sake, her pills! No, here, darling, it's all right. Beth! It's all right. Adam? But... No. Not Adam. Look again. Look close. Your eyes. Your eyes. There's something wrong with your eyes. Like wolves, aren't they? Come here. Ah! My arm, you're hurting me. Come with me. Uh... There are some other friends who want to meet you. Oh. Touch you. One in particular wants to take your hand. Oh. Oh. Can I find a doctor or something? No, no, no. Don't worry. Here. Here, darling. Here, swallow these. 
Where is she? Where? She'll be here soon, darling. Where? Here soon. Where? I want her. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she look helpless on the ground? Who are you? What do you want? Does look silly on the ground. <laughs> Doesn't she look silly down there? Perhaps you had better help her up there. Yes, help her up there. Take her hands. Take both her hands. No. No. Mustn't, mustn't touch. Fight her. Fight her. She is powerless without him. Draw on us. Draw on our power. No. Mustn't. Mustn't. You must set us free. You must set your wolves free. Must set you free? Yes. Must set you free? Yes. Then we'll set her wolves free. Wolves? Take her, Beth. Touch her. Touch her. Reach out and touch her. Can't you hear them, Beth? Can't you hear them? Waiting to cover the earth with blood? Yes. I can hear them. No! Hold her. Oh. She's helpless. Reach out and touch her now. Yes, I will. Will set wolves free. Will! Sarah. No! Help. Touch her! Help me. Sarah Help me. need Beth! Help me. Sarah Help. need Beth! Help me! Must, Help. must go! Help me. Please. Help me. Help me. I'm me again. Help me. No. No. I will not set you free. Take her. Not me. Take her. No. You cannot stop us. Force them together, my son. Make them touch. No. No. Fight them, Jane. Fight them. But I, I don't know. For your life. Fight them. Adam. I need you. Adam. 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 How is she? I can't understand it. Her pulse has got stronger. Steadied up. It's almost as if she'd got an influx of energy. Is she going to be all right? I don't know. I think so, but... Adam. Adam. What was that? Adam. What? Adam. I heard nothing. Adam. I need you. I must go. She Adam. calls. I must Adam. go. She needs me. Need Who needs you? Adam. Must go. To Beth. She needs but, me. For God's sake, man. Oh. Oh. It's all right, darling. It's all right. Oh. Everything's going to be all right. Beth. She's helping. She's here. And helping. You'll be all right, darling. You'll be all right. I know. I know I will be well now. Hold her, my son. Hold her. Make them touch. Fight. Fight for your life. <gasps> Here he comes. Quick, make them touch. Make them touch. I cannot. They are too strong. <gasps> you are too late. I can draw on his power. No, not when we are so close. No, not when we are so close. Beth. Take my hand, Adam. Take my hand. Stop them. Stop them. Stop Take my them. hand, Adam. Take my hand. Take it now. No. No. Here. We have touched. Time has been put right. Take her. Take his wife. Take her back back through time to complete the cycle and then return to oblivion. No! You must. I can control you now. Take her. Take her back. What's happening? Adam, what's happening? He cannot hear you. He cannot hear anyone. Go with them. Go with them now. Yes. Come with us now. Yes. Form the circle, my son, and spin. Adam, help me. You will spin. Help me. Round and round. Help me. And back. Help me. Time and spin.
back to the beginning. Faster and faster. Help me. Faster and faster. Back and back. Help me. Rip it open. Help me. Rip it apart. Tear it open. It is over. What? What's happened? Where's Jane? What's happened? She is gone. And the cycle is complete. Gone? Yes, Adam. Take me back to your hotel and let me explain. And then I will rest. Rest long and deep. And a new life will start. Adam, soon it'll be as if it never happened. Tell me, what do you remember? Well, I can remember some of it now. As if I were looking through the eyes of another person. Those two uh, people spinning with Jane. Between worlds, Adam. Between alternate universes, there is a limbo. Filled with forces inimical to life. Order, time. They're held in check only by the parallel logic of the worlds on either side. When this logic breaks down, then a gate is formed through which they can flow. An unimpeded avalanche of death and destruction. The child, potentially, was such a gate. In order to tear it open, two forces came into being, assuming shapes and forms plucked from your wife's mind at Oxford. At Oxford? So I did see... Yes. She was thinking of your mother and your brother when she and the child's paths crossed. So these were the shapes they assumed. Yes, but I'm afraid that I don't understand. In the other world, Jane's sister did not die. Jane died instead. What? In the other world, Adam, you married Liz, not Jane. You married me. You? Yes. I'm Liz. I have finally reached you. And we'll be together now until we die. Does the prospect please you? Yes. Yes, it does. But, but what about Ralph and Sarah? Won't they... They will miss the child. True. But she is with them. She's given her spirit to Sarah, infusing her body with strength and energy. Sarah can have children now. But she's no longer barren, and her heart is strong. They will be happy, even as we. But what about Jane? I, I remember them spinning, spinning with her. When and, and Jane died in one world, but not in the other, a paradox was created. A thing had happened, but not happened. Jane has gone to resolve this paradox, to become the child. When you touched me, the future was assured. Therefore, I could impose my will and have Jane taken back six years for a rebirth. I'm sorry, I just don't understand. The child and Jane were the same. The same body, six years apart. They were the two ends of time. The past and the future. Two halves, if you like. The two unhappy halves of a gate to chaos. They could not be allowed to touch, for had they then time would have been warped beyond repair. So, Jane is now... is, is now dead? No. <laughs> well, not exactly. She's been taken back to the beginning. Her mind has been wiped clean and her body altered. She's ready to start the cycle again, to become Beth, the child. She's waiting in a blizzard, naked and crying for help. She's white with cold, shivering with her passage through time. She is huddled against an old stone wall, her head in her hands, her knees drawn up, an embryo, waiting. She is waiting for Ralph and Sarah and you. Help me. Hello? Help me. 
Help me. What, what's, what's wrong? Help me. Help me. Here, are you, are you all right? Who is she? A girl. Um, get the brandy, darling, and some spare clothes. She's as cold as ice. What's your name? Beth. Well, come on, Beth. Come into the warm. You can't stay here. Where do you live? With you. Beth lives with you. <laughs> The Doppelganger by J.C.W. Brooke. Adam Oxton was played by Nigel Anthony, Jane Oxton by Emily Richard, Beth Harris by Elizabeth Lindsay, Sarah Stedman by Penelope Lee, and Ralph Stedman by Geoffrey Collins. The man was played by Jack May, and the woman by Mary Wimbush. The music was by Paddy Kingsland of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The studio managers were Patience Pratt, Carol McShane and Enid Clues. The Doppelganger was produced and directed by Ian Cottrell.